Our hymns this morning are found in a blue paperback book, and our order of service is found in the bulletin. Our first hymn, number 17. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our worship and celebration. I'd like to welcome all who are here gathering after the summer season. Hopefully uh, it was a good one. I'd like to welcome those who are new with us this morning. It is a joy to have you here. I'd like to welcome those who are joining us online. It's also great to have you with us this morning in this way as well. This morning we have, of course, as you noticed on the way in, our little cafe is still ongoing. And after service, I invite you to a lunch downstairs. And it's no cost of this lunch, a fellowship one. We'll get together and have a chat after the summer. And if we're new, to get to chat and have to know one another. The theme of our service this morning comes from kind of an Hawaiian theme, kind of gathered, if you didn't already know about it, aloha. And aloha is a word that's used as a greeting in Hawaii. But if you talk to anybody or find out the meaning of it, it goes much deeper. It actually even goes down to a spiritual meaning. It goes for peace and tranquility and also the essence of that brings everything and everybody together. And so this morning, uh, we come together in that way as well. And as you notice, we ordered the weather. It's a Hawaii-type weather, nice and warm and humid and sticky. And it's just for this morning, and so we'll see what happens after today. But this is the weather we've got. So before we continue on, I was asked to play one of our Sunday School songs, and I had a specific request, and I think you might know this one, so we're all standing. Let's sing this one first. There's no Sunday School this morning. We'll organize that in a week or two, but no reason why we can't have one of our songs this morning. This one you probably know is a favorite of many. I guess that's why it was requested this morning. Let's see if we get her up. Yes, I'm feeling like that. Let's try it again. That's it. Come on. 
Thank you very much. We continue now with our order for worship. Wherever you are on your faith journey, wherever you have come from, and wherever you are going, whatever you believe, whatever you do not believe, Jesus welcomes everyone to God's table. Are you ready to meet God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Meet with us in Christ today. Change us and send us out to fill your world with love and light and laughter. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Proclamation of the Word. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 103, and the response is, The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all, our, all your iniquities, heals all your hills. He redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing it is kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Our gradual hymn, hymn number seven.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. Out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him his debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe me. Then his fellow slave fell down and pledged with him, pleaded, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgive you all that debt because you pledged before me. Should we now not have that same mercy on your fellow slave as I have had on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father would also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Dear God, we come before you this morning, joined as brothers and sisters around your table, listening to your word. Open our hearts and our minds and our very spirits at this moment that that word may take root, that it may grow in us, that we may show your world that is in need of love and forgiveness and hope. Love, forgiveness, and hope. In your Son's name we pray, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Now, many of you Quite a few of you, I guess, realize that uh, I ride bike. I like to ride motorcycle. I've been doing it for a while. Never get enough time and enough weather, really, to get at it. But I enjoy it a lot. Very exciting. Sometimes a little scary, which makes it exciting. It's almost like, I don't know, meditation in a way. While you're riding, your, your whole mind is in a different space and is a place you can, can clear your mind. You also see and hear and smell things you could never do in a car or other vehicle. And most of all, about the people you meet along the way. You can't pull in anywhere without somebody, or on another bike or somebody not on a bike at all, talking to you and asking you questions and, and having a chat. You pull up on people if they're riding and they're probably dressed the same as you and riding gear or all lettered up. And you cannot have any preconceived notions of who that person is, because you just don't know. It could be rich or poor, some white-collar worker, some administrator or director, or it could be some person who makes their living by using their hands directly in physical work. It could be single or married, a person of fate. It could be a person with no fate at all. One person I met was enjoyable as an older gentleman downtown one day, and he told me he made his parents very mad. I could tell he wasn't from Canada by his accent, he's from the United States. And he said, I put this motorcycle together out of spare parts and junk, and I left. And I knew where I was going, where a lot of other people were going as well. In 68, he went to Woodstock, and he told me about all the adventures that he had there, which I'm probably not going to talk about this morning, but what an enjoyable story. Not a man, I meant a bottle of coffee inside of a Tim Hortons. He was singing music. Didn't give money, I don't usually, but a bottle of coffee. And as I chatted to him, he said, I was a, uh, 
a fairly well-off businessman in BC. I had several restaurant chains. I got sick for months. I lost everything. And so now I go from coast to coast singing. Sometimes just like this outside of a building, sometimes somebody will, will hire me to sing. I was in a, another coffee place one day and a, and a woman tapped me on the shoulder and, and turned around in the middle of COVID, so I kind of wonder what was going on. And she said, you know, when I lost my job, I was only young, they gave me a severance. So I bought a motorcycle and just drove. Next thing you know, I was down in the United States. And a year later, I made my way back home and my life was never the same after. And, and she told me some of, uh, some of her stories. It's a way of bringing people together, writing that otherwise would never come together. Taking that now to another level, I'm also part of another group, another community that brings people together that would never normally come together. And that's the community of the church. I've been blessed over the years to be a part of many parishes and congregations all over our province, and I visited others in other places. And all these congregations and parishes, large and small, different people come together that may not normally come together. It's a mix of rich and poor. Could be people liberal thinking or conservative thinking, young and old, men, women, straight, gay, black, white, brown, red, all different backgrounds and beliefs, different places in the world sometimes. Some people who dearly love one another, some people who really do not like one another, people who get along, people who've had falling outs. The church gathers people, different people, because we share in one common belief. We believe in Jesus himself. And like other, unlike other groups, we don't join because of who's in the group. When you join a group, you wonder who's a part of it. Do they think and do and enjoy themselves like I do? Common ways? The church is not like that. First, we look not to other people, but to Jesus. We believe in Jesus himself. So when I see another person in the church, you don't see that person first again as rich or poor, old or young, whatever background they've got. You first see another person who believes and loves Jesus himself. Another person who in some ways is broken, has struggles, has known loss in their life, difficult times, things they could not control. And of course, a person who also knows great joys in their life. A person who may just keeping it together for one more day or one more night, or a person that seems to be at that moment on top of the world. Together, believing in something more, looking for something more, wanting something more to live for. We find that in the church. Believing in a Jesus that welcomes the most broken amongst us, the saint and sinner alike, those who are lost, hurt, even the unlovable. Coming together to show love for Jesus as he shows love for us, to love then each other, and then of course to share that love with the world as we come in contact with it, each in our own way. Each of us then, without any sort of prejudice, we come just as we are. You might notice our church, and sometimes I lingo on our prayers and on our websites, we say, come, come as you are. That can refer to your clothes and what you wear, but it's not. It's who you are, what you are, what you are not. It doesn't matter. You are welcome to come just as you are without any preconceived notion or condition. The church doesn't mean a group of people that are heavenly perfect, but a group of people that come together trying to live a different life in a difficult world. Trying to live a different life in a difficult world. Together we, we follow Jesus, we do our best to love, to forgive, to care for each other, and to care for the world that we come in contact with. This family here of Holy Innocence is an amazing family as we live out our faith. We're never afraid to have a little fun as you, as you see today. You won't find this in the fine print in our prayer books, but we like to have a little fun. 
and now everybody can see it. So I'll get a call from the Bishop tomorrow, wonder what's going on. So somebody here has to be blamed for this one. We're not afraid to, to do new things as we have done many times in past. And we're not afraid to welcome new people no matter where they're from or what their ideas are. The same as ours are completely different altogether. So as we look into another fall, winter, spring season of the church, kind of as we look at it as, welcome. Welcome back to being church. And we pray that during this fall, winter season that we will get to know one another more, more people will become a part of our family, and we will learn to live out that faith in community as Jesus wants us to live. Dear God, today you welcome us just as we are. All our hurts and pains, joys and excitements. We come together as your people, united together with our prejudice, our preconceived notion. Round your table, around your word. Help us now as we live out our life of faith in this place and beyond. In your son's name we pray, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen.
we stand now as we make a profession of our faith, confess our faith in our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Aloha. Aloha. We pray to you, O Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God of authority and authenticity, we come before you today glad to know you give us the chance to change our lives and we have wandered away from your purposes. We give you thanks for the encouragement and support we receive from friends in Christ, here in our church, and wherever we meet them. We thank you for the relationships that have grown stronger through the courage to forgive, which you inspire in us. Use us as signs and servants of new possibilities you create. God of changed hearts, renew the future for all of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ of compassion, make our community one that lives out your grace and mercy. Today we pray for those among us and around us who are struggling to live wisely and well, who seek a way of integrity for the future. We pray for those who are confronting addictions or trying to change old habits that are harmful to health. Give them persistence and support. We pray for those who want to end violence and anger in their lives. Give them courage and wisdom to walk a new way. God of changed hearts, renew the future for all of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have broken the law and now seek to make amends. Teach them good judgment in action and relationships. We pray for those who have broken their word and want to rebuild trust and integrity. Show them how to take responsibility and live it out. God of changed hearts, renew the future for all of us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are seeking new work, learning new skills, or changing employment. Open new opportunities for them. We pray for all of us who seek new ways to live out our faith in this church and in this community. Help us communicate God's love in fresh ways so others catch the vision of your love. God of changed hearts, renew the future for all of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in silence for all those whom we seek, whom this week ahead. We pray in silence for all those for whom the week ahead will hold deep challenges and who need your support and ours to face what the days will bring. And as we remember in our prayers this morning, the people of Morocco, after the earthquake and the death of over 1,200 people, and the flood in Libya, with the death toll, after the flood there, death toll of over 14,000, 
and more to be yet to be found. And we pray for the people of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia as they clean up from the, I guess, the tropical disturbance that passed over there with the people without power and some are flooded and the roads are closed. We pray for them at this time as well. Renew the future for us all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Spirit of transforming power, work in us and in all for whom we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Loving God, creator of all, we thank you for the beauty of creation. Show us, we pray, how to respect the fragile balance of life. Guide by your vision those who have power to care for and to destroy the environment that, that by the decision we make. Life may be cherished and a good and faithful earth be preserved for future generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved them with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon me from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace, Christ. Peace. Our offering hymn this morning is hymn number eight. Hymn number eight. Thank you. 
We pray, merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. Lord of all, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You gave us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us sun and moon and starlit sky, everything that gives us light, light for our eyes, our hearts, our minds. You give us the fish in the sea, the birds of the ear, and every plant and tree the life that sleeps in the winter earth and awakens again in the spring. You give us friends and family, busy streets for young and old, for the life of earthly city filled in your city to come. You give us your love, even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You give us happy times and things to celebrate. In these we taste your kingdom, a feast for your children. You made us all, each wonderful different, to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way of life. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared his with his disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After he had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you fed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Savior. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God.
We may stand as we pray. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Once again, to invite you to our lunch afterwards downstairs, we had a, a use of, uh, rental in the hall last night, and the floor may still be a little wet, especially with the condensation stuff, so please be careful, but come on down, and we'll have a lunch and get to know one another. Our final hymn, hymn number 16. So I chose this song because it's my baby cousin's Riley's first time in church. Oh. So this song is dedicated to little Riley. Ah. to love and to serve the Lord.